so I was gonna make a uh, little how-to video on how I make these pins because these are by far some of the uh, cheapest pins I've ever made and probably some of the strongest this uh, a-frame design instead of a dome and the way it's tied together makes this pin a whole lot stronger and I can put my whole body on it without it collapsing yeah. a dome pin the way they're just tied together at the ends and the way the dome is it, it caves right in if a dog or something jumps on it but these the way the ends overlap and, and they're tied to it it keeps it from falling in it also gives you a bit more height the dome pins do give you the way they curve out give you a bit more wing room so you want to keep your perches low so the birds aren't hitting their wings the only ones that I have a high perch in are brood pins so that the hand can get up and get away from the rooster but uh, if it stags you know what you're wanting to show you want to keep the roost low I really could have done without this metal roost I thought it would need both of them each direction to make it more rigid at the bottom but it really didn't uh, the main thing is you want this one going this way is what you want because the way this slopes down your wire wants to flare out at the bottom and now you can bend it in some by hand and get that you know where it curves down but still if you want it to stay that way you need a, your roost pole going between them and not that way and uh, in the future I'll get a much bigger log because you want your logs dry weight to be the same weight as a 2x4 frame so that the wind don't blow it away so bigger log going that way is probably how to be in the future you want to come up one two three before you bend over and so when you do your wire out you want to cut down each corner until there's just three left and you want when you cut one of them's going to have the bar sticking out and one of them's going to be flat and your flat edge you want right here so you don't have wire sticking out and that way I don't know if you can see so these have the wire sticking out that way you can curve this over also to help tie it in now you don't want that being the only thing tying it because over time when you bend these it kind of stresses the joint they will break off because I can show you some old pins where they broke off now the tighter this is tied together the more rigid it is and doesn't want to bend in the best thing is electric fence wire cut it you know four to six inches and wrap around every joint the only problem is you do a few dozen pins and that wire is going to tear your hands up and with gloves on you can't get it as tight so I switched over to hog rings they are a bit more expensive too but it still ties together holds it good half inch hog rings would probably be the best these are three quarter because half inch will get that tight just like electric fence wire the only problem is I got these from Pinion Hatch Farms and his half inch weren't pointed they were blunt in and you want the pointed in hog rings so they bypass each other easier and get tighter because the blunt ends a lot of times they'll hit at the end and won't overlap and then I cover it with this this is a greenhouse ground cover like, you know if you ever went to a nursery that's what they put down uh, it's rated for eight years you got to burn the edges though everywhere it's cut and I found out it's better to use like a butane torch the small ones um, and burn it to cut it because if you cut and then burn you'll miss a few little pieces every here you know every once in a while and um, that, that'll unravel over time well if you just cut it with the butane torch you know that every surface has been burnt and uh, you don't want to use a regular lighter because it just you'll have spots that get too hot and burn too much and other spots that aren't hot enough and butane torch that's nice even flame won't blow out with wind and just zip right through and cut it uh, what else yeah I'll show you this one when you when you bend this over to meet your edges will stick up higher because you know this is coming in it'll stick up two rows higher so you'll cut that piece off that's the only waste you have. So it ends up being 40 inches tall and it's four foot by four foot. And again, you want you want this edge 
to have the smallest barb and your big barbs over here. Just twist them around. It actually it makes this side a bit shorter the way you're cutting it, but it's still down here the same. So you're not cutting it till you're bending it. So you still end up with four foot by four foot at the bottom. And that's you want this to come up some because if it just came straight down, it wouldn't be as rigid and the bird would have less room. You can come up higher before you go over, and I've thought about doing that, but I was afraid that I'd lose some of my strength because a lot of your strength comes from this folding over and tying into it. And you'll you'll think when you're first cutting it and doing it that it's just going to be the flimsiest thing ever. But as soon as you get these folded over and tied in, it gets a whole lot stronger. And you'll have waves and bows out, places that bow out, and I just stand it up and work them out flat. And then your logs going across of hold them where you want them. You know, cut them exactly four foot. That way it pulls the sides in. It makes, you know, if you got that going across, it's four foot. It makes it a whole lot stronger. And then the top is strong. And just, I mean, this pin, I can put all my body weight against it. Can't do that with a dome pin. And you get to have it more height. And as you don't really, the height's kind of wasted with those little perches, like for stag pins. But if you got brood pins, it's perfect putting a perch across and where the hen can get up and get away from the rooster and the way I pull my wire out is I put it here these rails I'm you know not everybody have this but you can rig up something and I just pull out to where I think four foot is count my 24 squares and then bend it bend it about a 90 degree angle and pull out another four foot and bend it and that way you got all four sides and cut it off and there I got the creases so you can stand it up and wire it together now your sides of bow in or out depending on which way you do your creases but that's just something you once you get it all tied together just kind of work your edges out a bit and get them straight and this these are the three quarter hog rings i get from pinion hatch you want the pointed ends that's what you want and i got this from tractor supply and it's the best hog ring pliers i've had you want to get the heavy duty ones you don't want to get the cheap ones this is the material I use. That edge would be straighter, but my butane torch was running out of butane, so I got edges that burn up a bit more. But normally, it would you could cut it pretty damn straight, and that's the torch I use. It's refillable, but I ain't got I don't have much luck refilling it. But it's about ten bucks Walmart. Yeah. That's about it.